Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at input in Unity. Um, so we're going to look at how to actually allow um, players to start interacting with the game by pressing keys on the keyboard or clicking on the mouse or moving the mouse around. So um, we can detect key presses, mouse movement, mouse clicks, um, uh, joystick movement, all of those things and then have our program react to that input. So with key presses, you can set up your game to detect specific key presses, like individual letters, like the S key or the um, X key when they're being, being pressed, and then you can have the game react to those key presses. But there is a better way of setting up input using Uni Unity's built-in input manager, and that's what we'll look at first before looking at how to detect individual key presses. So in Unity, you can set up your game to detect specific key presses um, but that doesn't allow your players to remap the game input controls to suit their preferences. So if you want to be able to allow players to, um, you know, remap the game input controls to suit their own preferences, then you're better off using the input manager. Otherwise, if you set up the game to detect specific key presses, those key presses are kind of hard coded into the game and the players can't really um, change things to suit their own preferences. So you can um, basically map the controls and using the input manager, and then you can allow the players to either map controls to their own liking or use the defaults that you specified. So if you go to edit and project settings and then input in Unity, it comes up with the input manager over here in the inspector, and you can click on different axes and you can specify the keys that correspond to the axes. So for horizontal axes, you've got negative, so left, a negative number on the horizontal axes, which is left, and then a positive number on the horizontal axes, which is right. So you've got left key and the right key, and then the A and D keys as alternatives specified for horizontal movement. So when a, um, uh, if you want something to move left, then you press the left or A key. If you want something to move right, then you press the right arrow key or the D key. And there's also vertical um, setup there as well, vertical movement. And there's things like gravity and sensitivity, which you can change too. Lots of different options there that you can change. There's defaults in there, so you don't really need to touch it. Okay, now we can use the input manager. Um, and basically, we can set up movement, like moving characters left or right. And they'll always move left or right, no matter what. Um, no matter how your player has remapped the controls. So um, what we can do is go to Mono Develop and we're going to actually have a look at the values that we receive when different keys are being pressed. So we'll set up two float variables. So float horizontal value. We're going to use input object and the get access method. And let's type in horizontal here. What this will do is it will get a horizontal value and store it in the um, in this variable called horizontal value. So when either the left or right or A and D keys are being pressed, it will get a value, um, either a positive value if the right or D key is being pressed, or a negative value if the A or um, left arrow key is being pressed, and the value will It'll be either positive or negative, and it will vary depending on how long they're holding or how hard they're pressing that key down. Um, and if there's no key being pressed, no horizontal key being pressed, then it will just be zero. Okay, we can copy that and we'll make another one. This one will be called vertical value. And we'll just change that to vertical. So it's going to get vertical movement. All right, now we can set up a simple little if statement here. If horizontal value is not equal to zero, what will happen here? So if it's equal to zero, then it means no key is being pressed. But if it's not equal to zero, it means that either the left, right, A or D key has been pressed. So if it's not equal to zero, it's going to print a little message saying horizontal movement. And then it's going to add the actual horizontal value to that message. So it's going to give the value there. All right, now we're going to copy this statement here. And we're going to 
do it again, but this time we're going to change horizontal to vertical. Okay, so it'll work for the up, down, W and S keys as well. We'll save that. We'll go into Unity. And, oops, there's, I've just made a typo here. Two L's there. Oh, there's another typo there. Okay, so make sure there's no typos there in your code. Um, clear the console. All right, try that again. Okay, so I'm going to press the up key. Okay, so I get here vertical movement. I get um, some small numbers there, but if I hold down the up key, it'll be one. So it's a positive number. Same with the W key. All right. Now if I hold down and down arrow key, it's a negative number. Okay, and the S key as well, it's a negative number. All right, left is a negative, and now it's saying horizontal movement. Right, positive number, A is negative for left, and D is positive. Okay, so it's detecting those key presses of the up, down, left, right, W, A, S, D keys, and it's um, spitting out the values there next to either vertical movement or horizontal movement. Okay, so we'll stop that. This time we're going to go back to the code and we're going to change it a little bit. So we're going to just change, delete that statement and we'll have if horizontal value is less than zero, we'll display the message left. So it means the left key is being pressed because the horizontal value is less than zero. And we'll copy that and this time we'll set it to more than zero and we'll display right. Okay. Now we'll do the same here, but we'll have vertical value is less than zero. So that means it's down. And copy and paste that. We'll have if vertical value is greater than zero, that means it's up. Okay, we'll save that. Go back to Unity. Clear the console. Run the game again. Now I'm going to press the up key. And see, it says up in the console. I'm going to press down, right, left. Now I'm going to press W, A, S, and D. Okay, so it's picking up all of those keys. Now, that's basically how you can set it up using the input manager. And rather than saying print left, you could attach this script to an object and you could get it to control the movement or the rotation or the scale of that object which is what we'll look at in the next tutorial. But before we go to that, we're gonna look at specific key input. So although it's generally a good idea to use the input manager for key input detection, sometimes it might be necessary to check whether a specific key has actually been pressed by the user. So for example, if you want to hard code something to happen when only the um, X key has been pressed, then you can um, do that using a different method. So instead of using the get access method, we can use the get key method. So this method will read a key code, which corresponds to a specific key on the keyboard. And that will re then return either a true or false value, depending on whether the key is pressed or not. So rather than a value between minus one and one, it's gonna return a true or false value. So. We'll use the, an example of the A key being pressed. So I'm going to delete all of this code here. All right. And we're going to create a Boolean value. It's going to be called bool. We're going to use the data type bool for a Boolean value. And it's going to be called is key down. It's going to be equal to input dot get key. So we're using the get key method this time. And then we need to use the key code of A, so do key code dot A. And as you're typing it, you get little suggestions here. So for example, if we wanted the right key, we can start typing right, and then we can see that we've got the right arrow there that we can use if we want to detect right arrow key movement. But we want to detect the A key. Um, so we close that off, those brackets, and then have a little semicolon there. So basically, we place this code inside the update method in a script that's attached to an object inside your game's scene. Um, so right now it's attached to the camera 
object in the game. Um, so it's going to detect whether the A key is being pressed or not. So um, it's going to be either a true or false value. Now what we can actually do is we can have a um, an if statement there. So if we go into Unity, just clear the console. It's not actually doing anything when we press the A key. So when I go to play, press the A key, nothing actually happens. So we need to actually specify um, what's what's going on here. Now we could have something here like print is key down, and save it, and then go back to Unity. And what that will do if we play the game. It's just saying false, and then when I press A, it says true. So it is detecting whether the A key is being pressed or not. But um, what we can also do is, instead of having all of this here, we can have something like an if statement. So we can have if input dot get key, and then key code, oops, input dot get key, key code dot a All right. um, we can have inside these curly brackets here we can have a message like print you pressed the a key okay we can save that and go back to unity clear the console run the game again right now I'm doing nothing but I'm about to press the a key and as I press it we get that message. If I hold it down, the message keeps coming through to the console. So again, um, it's just displaying a simple message in the console, but we can go further and we can set up this um, key input to do things when different keys are being pressed. So rather than just saying you press the A key, we could get a weapon to fire or we could have an object move somewhere. Um, okay, so that's what we'll look at in the next tutorial, how to move, rotate and scale objects um, when keys are being pressed. Um, so how to move, scale and rotate objects using code um, to basically make a game interactive. All right, that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.